Welcome to the Digital Growth Hack Club, where we help you elevate your business and your bottom line. Here is your host, Jenny Jones. Hey, this is Jenny Jones, the host of the Digital Growth Hacks Club. Hey, listen, uh, it's been a fun time going around, a lot of things going on. I have a lot of SaaS tools and a lot of things that I have in my on my shelf, if you will, my SaaS shelf. But there's one tool that stands out and on one of the top tiers that I love that I, because I'm able to do a lot of things with it. And I have the, um, I just so graciously have one of the co-founders here to join me from um, a tool by the name of Captain Data. Now I'll let him come on. His name is Guillermo. Um, he goes by G. So you're gonna you're gonna hear me call him G a lot. But, that's to save everybody, right, from messing up. But um, he's going to come on. He's going to share a little bit about their company, kind of the background, and he's going to give us an idea of some of the things that are that are happening. Um, I probably put a description below, or you'll see it above, of uh, um, of a couple of different ways I've been able to use the tool. But there's there I'm going to do probably in the next two weeks next two to three weeks, I'm going to do something real special with the tool. And he's going to share how I'm going to be able to do that. But I'm going to I'm going to do something major. So please stay tuned. Make sure you like and subscribe because this is going to be fantastic. So again, uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome to the show, Guillermo. Welcome to the show, G from Captain Data. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's so, definitely more simple to say, G. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I'll call you G now. Now, if you don't mind me asking you now, where where are you from? Because you you have the accent. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm from France. Uh, the company is based in France. We've started uh, from France, and I, I'm actually in the US right now, in San Francisco, uh, because we are trying to expand the company here. But uh, yeah, we're basically from France. Okay, yeah, because I knew it was France. So I was talking to him. I was like, wait a minute, now. I mean, I, I haven't. They made me take. French in school, but I don't remember anything. I was just trying to get out of class, yeah. right? So, <laughs> so he's he's out here on the coast, out here on my my west coast. As you can see, it's oh, raining yeah. outside. No, actually, it's always raining every time I'm on because that's my background. But listen, um, Guillermo, let's go ahead and let's unpack what Captain Data is at its core. Let's talk about that. And like I said, I'll have a link below or above to kind of share with you kind of how I've used this tool. But Guillermo, kind of just give us a, a overall view of what Captain Data is. Yeah, definitely. So the idea with Captain Data, and I mean, we're talking long term here, is just to automate the web uh, on a large scale. What we're doing at the moment is that we are focusing on lead generation. So obviously trying to get some leads automatically from sources like LinkedIn, Google Maps, Instagram, I mean, you name it. We have pretty much more than 30 sources at the moment. And the nice thing is that it's all no code. You don't need to know anything about technology, data. I mean, basically it's all, you just copy paste, click a button, launch it, and it goes live. So the idea is that now we are going to automate marketing and sales. Uh, we mostly work with large teams, for example, scale-ups uh, that needs to uh, automate lead gen for their sales team. I mean. Uh, all in all, you have to keep up the pace at some point. And this is where Captain Data can become handy. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, so it is a lead generation tool. Is that what you're saying? You're saying at, the, at, at its core, because I've used it to pull some leads down. I use it to pull some leads from Twitter. I've used it to pull some leads yep. from, um, from LinkedIn. And uh, I think that's, those are the only two that I've used. So far, I love the fact that what I did was, and I think I showed a sample of this, either I did this one or I, or I showed another one, but I used it for LinkedIn, I mean, for Twitter, because what I wanted to do, there was this large channel um, that I wanted to, I said, man, he has, you know, he has almost, you know, uh, 200,000 followers and they're following his subject. Yeah. I put out the same content. I don't have as many followers. But what I wanted to do was find out who are his followers. Then I want to follow his followers. And then they'll say, oh, who's here's another person doing the same thing. And that was the thought I had behind it. And it just started spiraling. 
And um, so is that the thought that went into creating a tool like this? Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, there are so many use cases, you know, with Captain Data. What you're talking about here is creating an audience based out of nowhere and something that you could never do uh, manually because it would take so much time, you know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, the idea that we have with Captain Data is that at the core, if we are talking about the core of things, yeah. uh, we are building a technological asset. We know, you know, we are talking about a technology and a platform with a, uh, many different tools that gives you access to, a, I mean, a limitless uh, use cases. So what you're doing is that you're creating an audience. Uh, somebody else might just want to extract leads on LinkedIn uh, to do an outreach campaign uh, with Lemlist. Uh, and so on and so on, you know, the idea is that we give you the tool and then we give you the best practices and then you just do pretty much whatever you want with it. That's the, also the beauty of Captain Data, you know, and the beauty of no code too, because it's not just a trend, it's really something that works out. Yeah, you know, and I, and I, and I appreciate the fact that you brought up no code because trust me, I've ran into some tools. I'm like, wait a minute, what? You want me to do this? I want to just get in and do yeah. that. Your tool keeps everything on the surface. Um, that's what I like. It says, hey, do you want to connect this social media site? I'm like, yeah. And it says, okay, we'll just log in and you connect the site. The other ones you had to log in, you had to lift up the hood, you had to put air in the tires, you had to put oil in there. You're like, man, this is a lot of stuff. I'm only just trying to get uh, data out of it. And that was one of the things that I was impressed about Captain Data because I had kind of seen other people doing it before, but Captain Captain Data just made it so much easier for me to do. And that, and so the intent was well, you guys, you wanted to make it easy. Now, let me ask you this. So you, when you say you guys are for, I guess, the big marketing shops, right? How does an entrepreneur or a solopreneur that's trying to grow and scale their business, how is Captain Data um, even beneficial to them? Because you guys have a lot of, when I look at your store here, you guys have a lot of things that we can connect with. So give me a use case for us. I'm a small company, right? And um, I'm trying to, to grow my business. Give me, give me a good use case at Captain Data. You say, oh man, Captain Data, we can do that. Give me, give me one good use case. So it's very, very hard to say this use case is going to be perfect for you because all in all, there are so many different uh, businesses out there, mm -hmm. uh, even small businesses you can have. Uh, you can maybe target uh, plumbers in LA or you can maybe work with, uh, I don't know, IT companies. Uh, what you really have to think through is first, how do you do it manually? That's mm. always the thing that I try to... Uh, advise people because if you can't do it manually then you can't automate it it's stupid but uh, it's one of the, the the first role of automations then you get a look um, on the sources for example if you're looking for plumbers then you're not lo uh, looking going to look for them on linkedin you know um, right. But then you're going to look for them on yellow pages. Mm. And what you're going to, to do is basically to call them because those people, they don't really have uh, emails. So this is not the best way to reach out to them. So you also have to think about how are you going to reach your audience? So this is, again, this is why we have so many sources, so many integrations, mm -hmm. because we need to cover the entire, uh, let's say use case that you might have in, in your head. And uh, that's why it's very difficult for me to give out uh, basic use cases. But what's re working really well is not to do uh, large volumes. Generally, people tend to come to us and say, yeah, I need, uh, I don't know, like uh, 10,000 leads. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, 10,000 leads, it's, it's a lot. Right. Are you sure you're going to be able to process them? Uh, sh maybe you should just, uh, try to really segment very well what you're trying to do. Um, target maybe a few hundred people, let's say 200 people, um, and try to segment it very well so it's personalized. Uh, it's stupid, but then again, if you are calling primers in LA, maybe it's a little bit different than calling primers uh, in uh, New York. Your script is going to be different. Uh, a few variables are going to change. 
And all in all, that's what matters, you know, in marketing these days. Uh, you should not think about volume. You should think about quality. Because if mm. you really think about quality, then uh, all in all, your campaigns are going to be much, 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 much better than if you're just going to blast and spam people. So, per yeah, and they're cracking down on the spam. The FCC is getting really tough on this whole spamming thing. So, so a person could say, hey, I want to have 500 leads by the end of the week. So I want to have, I want to generate, I want to turn on a one of your applications and do one of your, uh, I guess they're not called recipes. They're called. Uh, yeah, sure. You can call them recipes. We, we recipes. call them workflows. Yeah. Workflows. Yeah. So I want to turn on a workflow that would allow me or allow Captain Data to pull 100 leads uh, over the next five days. So something like that could work. And I want to, I want a hundred uh, closely defined leads. I don't want to just go fishing in the ocean. I'd rather go fishing in the pond. Right. And I want to get quality leads. Something like that could work with your tool. Right. Definitely. I mean, and there are a few ways to do it. If your target is on LinkedIn, then it's a piece of cake. We have so many workflows that are uh, automating LinkedIn. If, and this is most of the case for small businesses. For example, if you're uh, targeting lawyers uh, or freelancers uh, like photographers and stuff like this, then you're going to use Google Maps. On Google Maps, there's two things that you're going to have. First, the phone number, if you're lucky, and then the website. Uh, we have a recipe that is actually uh, extracting leads and uh, it's lines on Google Maps and then finding the website. Then we are going to extract the website and on the website, we're going to find the social uh, medias, social URLs. Based on the social URLs, then you can actually extract all the data and have more context about it. Then again, uh, if you have all this social network data, it's going to be very interesting for you because you're going to be able to say, hey, I know that you're running, I don't know, an e-commerce store and that you're based out uh, in LA in this neighborhood. And I don't know if you see where I'm getting at, but yeah. again, we're talking about personalization here, context, and this kind of workflow that is completely integrated and automated inside Captain Data is going to give you this power. And, and I mean, it's really time saving because if you had to do it like manually, I mean, it's crazy. You just have to open like maybe 10 URLs, 10 websites, and just for one results, uh, which is great with Captain Data is that you just have to click a button, you know, it's, and then it's. Yeah, and I noticed right that. Out. I noticed, so let me ask you this. So I see a tool on here. I see an application for TripAdvisor. Who would, yeah, yeah. who would use TripAdvisor or how would they use that particular tool? I mean, I, this may be off subject, but I'm like, who? Would, how do you use TripAdvisor? I'm not yeah, in that's that, good question. I'm not in that business, so I don't know. So what would they do? Well, basically, uh, that's a very good source if you're looking at uh, hotels and restaurants. Hmm. Uh, let's say that you're going, you, you want to do a market research to say, okay, how many restaurants are there in San Francisco? How many restaurants that are selling sushis in San Francisco? All right, uh, let's say that there are hundreds of restaurants. If you know, if you need to do a, a market research, uh, if you want to reach out to restaurants, then you're going to have the phones and emails. If you need to just know the average price of these restaurants to just, you know, fine tune your restaurant, if you're opening a restaurant, then you're going to be able to do so. I mean, you see the possibilities there. Just with this source, you are able to do either a market study, a market research, or just pure lead generation. It really depends on how you think about it then, you know, it's, uh, oh, it's a so, mind game. Yeah, so you're saying, um, okay, so TripAdvisor, okay, I can see how that can be used for like restaurants. And so really I'm looking at it, you kind of have a little bit for everything. You have a connection to yeah. Shopify, you have an Instagram, uh, you definitely have a LinkedIn. So. So tell me now there's a Google and then there's a Google map on here. What, what would a person give me a use case for, I mean, Google, you can find anything on Google, but give me a use case for Google, right? This is not a trick question. I'm just asking, I'm trying to find out and where if people may be interested in picking up your tool, hopefully I'll be able to put something, uh, a, a deal yeah. or something below in the description but I want them to be able to get some ideas. And is this tool, can I use this tool to do this? So 
What would Google, what would people be using Google for? With, okay, with Google, there is uh, one interesting one that is, uh, you know, it's not very common, I'd say, because not every know, not everyone knows that Google has APIs to actually uh, get programmatically results. Um, what we're using it for is, for example, if you have, um, let's say you know that uh, Guillaume Odier is working at Captain Data, and then you know that Captain Data, the website is actually captaindata.co, but you don't have um, my email or my LinkedIn. What you're going to do is that you're going to try to automate a search with a query that is using my full name and my website. So basically, Guillaume Audier, captaindata.co, uh, or my co-founder, Marc Francis, captaindata.co. And then you're going to use one of our uh, workflow that is uh, called um, uh, Find LinkedIn Profiles. And what it's going to do is mm. that it will actually give you the LinkedIn URL of my profile or Mark's profile or anyone's profile. And from there, you are going to be able to extract the LinkedIn profile and all the data related to it. It's very powerful. If you get a website, you can basically get a match of approximately 80% accuracy, which is honestly, which is fine, which is really fine. And it, it allows you to actually enrich, for example, your serum. Uh, this is something very, very powerful. And honestly, if you have this kind of data and you don't know how to actually enrich it, I strongly advise you to look around uh, things like this, because in the end, it's worked out very well for some of our clients. Now, do you um, do you guys do any type of, uh, do you guys have any type of training or any type of workshops that, the users of your tool, you guys kind of put together sessions for them and say, hey, you know, because we're trying to help you guys, because your tool is essentially, yeah. it's a sales tool, definitely B2B, but um, do you guys put on any type of, uh, to help your, to help your people that your tools are- Actually, um, yeah. yeah, we we are, we have, uh, okay, so first, uh, each of our automations and workflows have a guide. So we have actually documented everything. So basically you should be able to use uh, everything from the ground up. There is also something that we've been working on on the, the past few months is, is a uh, basically what we call a data academy, a mm. data automation academy. Mm. Um, we've been working with a, a great expert on outbound and we've raised actually the first course. It's not entirely public yet. Uh, it's it's um, we are actually releasing it uh, just right now. Uh, it's it's called the Outbound and ABM Academy, uh, where you get access to a crazy good uh, academy and course. Uh, honestly, it's based on Captain Data. It's based on um, not you know it's not theoretical. It's totally practical. Uh, what you get at the end is uh, quality leads, a very good overview of your business, of how you're going to actually do outbound and all. You have access also to the experts, uh, Timothy. Uh, we've been working with him for quite some years now. Um, so yeah, it, so it's coming. It's coming out. So uh, only, only, only people who have Captain Data is going to get access to that to that academy, right? Yeah, because the academy is useless without Captain Data. I mean, we've Captain based Data. the academy on Captain Data because what, what we don't really like about academies is that it's it's too theoretical. You know, there is ideas here and there, but it's not like, okay, at the end, you're going to, to get there. You're going to have leads. You're going to enrich your, your customer base and stuff like this. And, and And at the end, that's what you want. You know, you want something very practical, something that it, that is going to be of use. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're going to invest money in it, then you want you want a real outcome. You know, and that's what that's what we actually give. Okay, yeah, great. Um, I have I have two or three more questions. One of them I saw here, just looking at um, Sales Navigator for for LinkedIn. Tell me the power of that because sales got and sales navigator is already pretty powerful, but what can you do to even take sales navigator to the next level? Um, Cause yeah. I, if people say, Oh, I, I use sales navigator. I'm good. He's like, Oh, have you used sales navigator and captain data? So tell yeah. me how does that go to the, and we're talking about LinkedIn, right? 
B2B quality leads, you're going to find them on LinkedIn. Yeah. So tell me what the yeah. sales navigator does. Tell me how you use that or what I, what's a good one with that. Yeah, definitely. This is maybe the, the, the most used uh, source and in integration actually that we have at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so sales navigator, where to begin? So first, as you said, it's maybe the best way to, to find leads for most B2B business at the moment. And then mm -hmm. if you're looking to, uh, what generally people tend to do is that in outbound, there is this theory that is not only a theory, that is something totally validated by the way, that is saying, okay, what you should do is that you should know who you're selling to. You should know your ICP, your ideal customer profile. Mm -hmm. Based on this, you should perfectly know your segments. Without this, just forget about doing outbound. And I'm not talking about building a, a persona and saying, hey, yeah, this, this guy that is called Guillaume is doing, I don't know, running every Friday at five. No, this is completely bullshit. I mean, you don't, I mean, this is not how you actually do B2B, you know, and outbound. Right. Uh, you really know how to do that. works for B2C, what though. You really... <laughs> that, that works for, for yeah, some in way. a way. Well, all right, let's stay on B2B, right? Because <laughs> B2C, yeah. if you know someone's running every single day, yeah. then you know okay. you can sell them tennis yeah. shoes, right? All right, so I just... Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so let's yes. stay on B2B, right? Let's stay on B2B. That was funny. But you, right. you know, yeah. the concept of, of personas, it's, it's mostly that, and people tend to just uh, stop there. But what you have to, to know is that how much are they paying? What's the, the tools they are using? What's really the pain point? what's their uh, budget and so on and so on. That's a real person. That's a real ICP, you know. Uh, that's how you segment your market. Based on this, uh, you should not have much more than three ICPs at the same time. Otherwise, it's going to be completely, mm. I mean, it's going to be way too hard. And, and to ICP, really focused. ICP, just for my audience, means what? Ideal customer profiles. Mm -hmm. You could also use the account customer profile, which is basically on the, the company level. For example, at Captain Data, that's only what we use because we don't really care in a way about the people in, uh, themselves, but the company. Okay. Um, then once you have your segments, what you're going to do is to map out the entire markets. Basically, you know who you want to reach, which companies you want to reach, you know. So what you should do before doing anything else is trying to extract all this data. So trying to extract all the accounts and all the, the, the job titles basically related, related to those accounts. So I don't know if you're targeting like uh, startups and that you're setting, setting to CEOs and founders, then, I mean, it's, you have to know exactly how many founders you're going to be able to sell them to. Because for example, if, I don't know, it, it happens a lot. Like uh, at some point you realize that Fuck, my uh, entire uh, base is like uh, 1,000 profiles. It's, it's not a lot. So what, my entire market is like uh, 1 million? <laughs> okay, we, we do have a problem, you know. <laughs> uh, it, it's happening a lot. We are seeing this uh, a lot, believe me. Mm. And from there, you can actually switch things, change things, and, and, and think about it. But all in all, what you have to do is segment, segment it then translate it as a sales navigator search. What you will have is probably, I don't know, like 10,000 accounts and maybe 40,000 profiles. Let's imagine numbers like this, which is roughly what you'll get, depending on what you're targeting and so on and so on. But how are you going to extract 40,000 profiles? On sales navigator, the limit is uh, 2,500, you know. And then what's going to be very, very interesting is on this navigator, you have this filter that is the exclude viewed leads. You know, it, it allows you to exclude a lead that you've already viewed on your search. So for example, if you have uh, these 40,000 leads and you visit the first uh, 10,000, then it's, it's going to decrease to 30,000 and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. What we actually allow you to do with Captain Data is set on autopilot to visit those leads. So for example, if you have a search of 40,000, mm -hmm. you're going to do roughly 1,000 leads views per day, and it's just going, going to decrease. So each day is going to decrease, to decrease, to decrease, to decrease. At the end of the month, you will almost have your 40,000 leads. 
So you all almost have your entire target space mapped out, ready to be used. And I'm not telling you to just use it per se, just right off the batch, you know. It's just there. You have knowledge, very strong knowledge. You have the context about it. Based on this, you're going to be able to actually segment this base, work on this base to actually find signals. For example, is this company uh, raising money? Is this company hiring people? And then the day that this, those companies are going to be inside this kind of segments, you know, those signals, then it's going to be easy because you you will always uh, you will already have the data. You're not going to have to think about okay, uh, who am I targeting uh, again? Oh yeah, it's just this guy and this guy mm -hmm. uh, for this signal. And this is how you can actually scale outbound marketing personalized uh, with a really high quality and not doing like a massive bullshit that everybody is doing at the moment and that is definitely not working out. Wow. So that's a lot. So as we kind of bring this yeah. to a close, I know you guys um, are supposed to be doing some type of... Uh, you guys going to be adding uh, some new services and stuff? Or do you want to talk a little bit about that? Or, I mean, uh, in the next couple of weeks, you guys are going to be doing something. You want to want to share a little bit about that? And if you don't, I think you turn down yeah. your mic. Turn down your mic just a little bit. I think it's popping a little bit. And I know you're in San Francisco and you're like, hey, I got whatever I got in front of me, man. I got to use it. I'm not at my home base. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted you to make sure. So, um you want to talk about that a little bit? Because I think you guys, you guys had these yeah. applications you were doing. I want to say one, two, three, four, one, three, six. You guys got about probably 40 or so applications, but I think you guys are yeah. going to open it up and do some other stuff. You want to talk about that a little bit? Definitely, definitely. So first, the idea is that we are going to expand in the U.S. So we'll keep adding, uh, I'd say, like U.S.-based integrations with mm -hmm. tools like Outreach, uh, Zoom info and stuff like this. So this is the first big thing that we're going to do in uh, 2022 and in the months to come. And maybe the biggest thing that uh, we could talk about is the release of our uh, workflow editor. So basically on the 7th of March, we're going to release um, a, a workflow builder that is pretty much looking like Zapier, if you know Zapier, right. uh, which is, I mean, a, a great tool out there when you we talk about automation. And right. uh, it's going to basically change the game because you're going to be able to create your own custom workflows based on our technology and the automations that we released. So it's going to be very, very powerful. Like um, all the things that come to your mind that previously you, you had to ask us to do or things that we normally would do custom and, and so on and so on, then we are going to bring the no code to a, a, a whole new level, you know, uh, because mm. I mean, this is really something that was missing. Something that on the market is not, it's pretty tough to do. It's pretty hard. I mean, the other tools are not always easy to use. And mm -hmm. I mean, we've been working on this for quite some time now. And I think we've, uh, we are going to read something really, really big. Okay. So as far, I mean, so I know as we kind of wrap, um, I know, you know, Captain Data is kind of a scraping tool, and I know the problems we've had in the past, and I've heard stories of IP addresses getting blocked because they're trying to, like, people go in and says, hey, let me get 100,000 leads, right? And they're, they're, uh, they're, they're manipulating the system and doing some other things. Does Captain Data run into any of those problems, and they're, and they're doing a scraping or, or anything like that? Or yeah. That's a good question. And actually what we've um, put into place to avoid these problems, it's pretty simple that um, every application has its own set of limits, which you generally don't find in other uh, web scraping tools. So basically if you're uh, extracting data on LinkedIn or Instagram, for example, we're going to have a set of limits that is going to say, okay, you cannot do that much more than X times a day, for example, and then it's going to be reset every day or so. The idea is that um, we just keep within the application's limits. Uh, it's pretty well known that uh, you have to be compliant, and that's basically what we do with Captain Data. And you don't have to fine tune anything. It's 
basically everything is packaged so you don't have to think about it uh, it's that's what i enjoy most that's what i enjoy yeah. most about your tool the other tools if, if you were getting a scraper tool for the first time, you didn't even know that there were limits. And you go in there, oh, let me get all 100,000 yeah, yeah. of them, right? Next thing you know, you're blocked or something like that. So let me, I'm going to leave with this question and you may can answer, you probably can't, but Facebook or Meta has been one of those things that they all, they find anything funky, anything going on crazy, you know, they'll do some different things. But what about Facebook groups do you guys do facebook <laughs> groups is that is that coming or you just hey i don't want to talk about facebook groups or because to me yeah, yeah, it's it's coming yeah oh so facebook groups is coming you're gonna you, you yeah. guys are gonna, that yeah, must be a tricky one that must be yeah, a tricky, it's a tricky one, one. Yeah. it's a, definitely a tricky one i mean uh -huh. facebook is definitely not the easiest one to 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 extract but uh, to work with but yeah definitely facebook is it's uh, been on top of our list for quite a while now we've been pretty busy with the workflow editor but yeah facebook uh, group extrado is definitely coming yeah because <laughs> i mean so to me what i found right is facebook in the side of groups that's where the the enriching can go that's where you can find most of your information uh if anything of worth anything on facebook it's in the facebook groups um yep. okay so i just wanted to so that he's like hey let us get this out first and then we'll we'll we're going to move on to that okay so uh i mean it was great i mean i learned a lot today hopefully the audience learned a lot um um i don't have any i thought i may have had another twitter question but uh i do not um yeah so yeah, I think that's all I had. And you got the chance to share with you guys are going to be doing. So again, uh, I'm going to try to have, I'm going to talk to Guillermo. We're going to see if we can put something together. See if we, uh, there should be a link below that you guys can have an opportunity to be able to explore that. I'm definitely going to have a link to some of the, the way that I've been able to extract some data and been able to use that as well. And, and the, my Twitter example was more of, I wanted more people to see my content. If you're following that content, then I want you to, I'm putting up the same type of content as well. So follow me too. And then I make it clients from that. So that's more of, to me, I think that's more of a, that can almost be a, that's a B2C as well. And I think, I think I use it for Instagram for B2C as well, but I have used your LinkedIn for your B2B or business to business business to consumer. I just want to make sure we're putting out these B2B, B2C. I want to make sure the audience understands that. Okay. So that is all I really have. Oh, I have one more trick question for you. What about Indeed? Yeah, go ahead. What about Indeed? What is, you have Indeed as one of your applications. How, yeah. now does that work for B2B or does that work for, uh, let's say I'm a headhunter and I, I'm a, I have an agency where I hire people. Is that where that comes into play or you use that for something? Or um, no, the, the idea is that, you know, I've talked about uh, signals uh, on the markets. And for example, let's say that you're selling to companies um, and inside those companies, you're targeting uh, CFOs. Mm -hmm. So chief financial, financial officer. Right. Uh, if your company is going to hire a CFO, uh, let me tell you that it's just the best signal that you could have on the market because you know they're going to hire a CFO and you're targeting your CFO. It means that your tool is going to be at the best moment in this company's life in a way. You know, you're going to be at, at the best moment because they, then they are going to think about uh, setting up tools and, and, and stuff like this. And then... If you know that they're uh, hiring someone, then it's the best time to connect with, uh, with them. It's it's the best personalized approach because then you'll be like, hey, I saw on Indeed that you're recruiting a CFO. We have the best tool for CFOs, blah, 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 blah. This is oh. what I'm talking about when I'm talking about personalization, you know. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, if you're saying this to someone, then... So if you have a tool, so so if I understand you correctly, if I have a yeah. tool that's utilized by CFOs, right? Yeah. And you're looking for a CFO, then you kind of connect with them and says, hey, once your CFO gets on board or, or you kind of connect with them and let us know when your CFO gets on board and 
you know, we want to connect with them. We want to, it's going to make his, his or her job a lot easier and can in fact probably increase profits. So we definitely want to be able to connect with them. Okay. I can see. So really a lot of this, man, it just really is your imagination. What can you do? And, and this tool reminds me as I kind of close, um, I used to work in one of the most competitive fields back in 1998, right? I'm dating myself in Silicon Valley. I was working in Silicon Valley and I used to work for a large telecom company, um, AT&T, and we, we competed with yeah. MCI, right? MCI, which is no longer around. Uh, yeah, yeah. We competed with Sprint. We competed with Verizon. And we all had what a commodity, right? We were, we were, um, building out networks for everybody and stuff like that. And the only reason why I bring up this story is because I remember how creative we had to be to, to change, right? Everybody, the, the person that comes in for IT, they're like, hey, we're meeting with Sprint at two o'clock. We're meeting at MCI at three o'clock and we're meeting with AT&T at four o'clock. So how are we going to separate ourselves? We would sit literally in our, in our sales offices trying to figure out how to be different. And I remember one thing we used to do, if it was a large account, I mean, we're talking a million dollar, you know, five, $10 million account. This is one thing we started to do. And I ended up becoming one of the top salespeople because we sat there and we thought about this was we would send pizza just before lunchtime, right? And we'd order pizza and we'd tell them it was for the IT, the decision makers, we would order pizza and, and you could smell the aroma throughout the entire office. It wasn't at lunch, but it always arrived just before lunch, right? And because if, if lunch, everybody's gone, but just before lunch, you start smelling. And they say, we'd say, hey, compliments of AT&T and we'd have our <laughs> business, we'd have our business cards on them. No, this was, we made so much money. And the nice. only reason why I bring that up is because this is the type of creativity you have to do to separate yourself in this kind of yeah. market. So I wanted to share that story because when I look at this, this reminds me, you have to be creative. You can't do the same old song and dance that everybody else is doing. I like the Indeed idea. Um, is your academy going to be giving us these little secret nuggets? You're going to be giving Actually, us? Actually, yeah. Little... Okay. Uh, it's Best it's practices. Even more than this. It's okay. even more than this because we have put up what what we call signal, you could also call them intents. You know, when you connect with someone, then you need an intent. If you don't have an intent, just forget about it. You are outbound sex. Right. And then what we have put up is the list, the complete list, actually, the like complete list of all intents that you could ever use. It's something that you're not going to find uh, anything uh, ever. I mean, on the markets, it's uh, it's after 10 years of uh, doing this, you know. <laughs> Uh, basically right. but uh yeah definitely it's totally in the academies all right you guys heard it here you heard it here first you're going to be able to get hopefully uh, Guillermo, come on man give me something i gotta have something in the link or something i gotta <laughs> let the people yeah. get connect sure. to you guys so listen we're going to be able to, he's going to do some stuff they got a new they got a new something coming out on the 6th of march they got the academy is going to be dropping probably uh maybe second quarter or third quarter or something this year there's going to, this is it. So if you're B2B and it works for B2C as well, they got some cup, um, tricky things in there as well. So this is where you want to be one of the best scrapers I've seen because they show you everything and they do the things for you. You don't have to be technical. You don't have to go in and go under the hood and, and change the wires and all that other stuff. It just, you click on it and it just does for you. And again, I should have a link in the description of where you can get Captain Data. I should also have a link to one to where I've shown you a video of how I use it to enrich and extract information from Twitter. And I think I use LinkedIn. I'm going to do another one. As soon as you launch that on the 6th, I'm going to do another one. It's going to blow everybody's mind because I have an idea of what I want to do. So again, is there anything, Guillermo, do you have any last words from you? Now you're in San Francisco now, so you got to be able to come up with something. You're pretty close to Silicon Valley. So you got to give us something real deep. Give the audience, give my audience something to take away. What do you have? What are your final words? <laughs> well, my further words, I'd say that uh, probably you'll see Captain Data a lot more in the US right now uh, as we are trying to expand. So maybe next year uh, we'll be there. So it's it's not official there, but uh, maybe coming pretty soon. Yeah. Okay. All right. You heard it here. Now I have, I have 
people from all over, right? So, but you still can get Cap and Data, even though they're in in uh, they're France. Good. You still can get it, yeah. But he's saying they're gonna they're gonna have they're gonna be closer to you out here. Okay, interesting. Good to know. All right. So again, this has been Jenny Jones, Digital Growth Hacks Club. I hope you guys enjoyed this sit down I've had here with one of the co-founders, Guillermo G of Captain Data. Uh, it's been a pleasure meeting with him. I learned a lot. I didn't even know they have this new academy coming. Now I'm excited, right? And I can't wait till March 6th till they drop this new uh, builder that they're going to put out. Um, I have an idea of what I want to do with it. I may mix it. I think I'm going to mix it with two more tools that I have coming and I'm going to probably put that video up. Make sure you stay tuned. I may even put that into VIP. I don't know. We'll see. You guys take care. Be safe out there. Goodbye for now. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us here on the Digital Growth Hack Club, where we help you elevate your business and your bottom line. Please do not forget to subscribe and share. And until next time, goodbye for now.